Hello everyone, I am Daedralis, a streamer that focuses on the Wars of Liberty mod for Age of Empires 3. So if you are looking for information on what this mod is all about, you have come to the best place for it. The first time I found about this mod, there were just so many new features and changes, it felt like a whole new game. However, as a result of this exact point, it can get quite overwhelming for new players as it has for me in the past. So I've decided to make this video talking about the general things you need to know about the mod when you're about to play it. And on top of that, why you should play Wars of Liberty, why you should give it a chance, and why it's downright epic. Let's get right into it. So diving into the first and probably the biggest reason the mod should be very interesting to everyone is with the number of new civilizations. On top of adding new civilizations to the existing European, Asian, and native cultures, Wars of Liberty brings the Latin American, Anglo-Saxon, Balkan, and African cultures into the game with Middle Eastern and Polynesian, cultures planned for the future as well. Right, so getting into the new civilizations, let's start with the Europeans. With Denmark and Sweden planned in the near future. Asians. Natives. Anglophones. Africans. Balkans. And finally, the biggest cultural addition to the game, Latin Americans. As you can see, all civilizations from certain cultures do share the same architectural theme for their buildings while still being able to show some uniqueness. Whether it be special buildings, small changes in texture, or just totally different color schemes for the buildings, every civilization is differentiable even within their own culture. So you can truly see the work and effort placed behind this mod by the developers as they manage to deliver these civilizations accurately, both in terms of abilities, architecture, and units, and also looks so damn amazing. However, this video is intended as a short and general video. I will not be going into civ by civ detail for this. Uh, what I will focus on, of course, is the abilities and style of each culture instead. What I mean by cultural abilities is anything that is unique to the entire culture. For example, Europeans, as you can see, have factories and capitals where other cultures do not. So, therefore, any European civ edition, like Malta over here, also has factories and capitals, respecting that culture's theme. Korea, for example, is no different than any other Asian civ. Asians age up using wonders, villages trickle export, which can then be used at a consulate, and also have rice paddies that either produce food or coin. Korea simply has their own variants of the same abilities. Next up is the natives. Now the natives are a little interesting as they aren't too consistent. What I mean by this is that the base game natives and the added natives have two key differences. One, new civs do not have a fire pit as you can see. Two, base game civs and added civs have different religious buildings. The, the base game ones get up to five totems that can trickle faith once religion is picked, whereas the monument for the added civs must have villagers tasks as usual to gather faith but does have the ability to cast god powers that can be very beneficial to your colony while very very deadly to your enemy. Cast drought on a selected area to slow down enemy villagers gather rates. Cast a deadly thunderstorm that kills units with each lightning strike. Cast a devastating earthquake that even shakes your entire game. Cast a snow warning to slow down all units in an area. Cast a deadly tornado to deal damage to buildings and units at the same time. But not all god powers are this deadly and violent. You also have some good ones. For example, starting a rain that boosts all gather rates from farms. It also has rainbows. You can also sprout a great Amazon forest out of nowhere. You can also start a fire that spreads around the enemy town, burning everything in its wake, including buildings and units alike. So with that said, let's jump into our first new culture, the Anglophones. The Anglos probably have the least number of new futures compared to the other cultures as they are pretty similar to Europeans. However, they possess villager explorers that are capable of, while well, both being a villager and an explorer. They can only gather from hunts and crates, not from uh, trees, coins or livestock, but are able to crack shot and gather from treasures as well as build town centers and trade posts. 
They do right. have an additional dog explorer, which doesn't have any offensive abilities, but is quite speedy and powerful against treasure guardians and can still pick up treasures. The most notable cultural feature is the party age-up system. The Anglos have a partition system where on top of the normal age-up bonuses, they also unlock a certain unit according to the partition as well as the tech. Uh, so you gotta be very careful with how you age-up as the units and techs that you do not choose will not be available later on in the game. Moving into the African culture, we have quite a few unique abilities. Aging up is done through the library that has three different tech lines. The red tech, uh, which unlocks the military units and buildings. The yellow tech line that unlocks economic upgrades and buildings. And finally, a blue tech line that unlocks civil buildings such as the church and its techs. So even if an African civ is age 2, it doesn't necessarily mean that they can build barracks and churches. So as a quick demonstration, if we get two eight red techs, we'll be age 2, but if we get a villager over here, we can't actually build these. Moving on to the second point, Africans also have export like Asians, but villages do not trickle it. Instead, they must gather like a normal resource from spice stalls. African uh, civs do start with one spice stall at the beginning of the game, but for further spice stall, they must train it and improve it from spice shops. Export can then be used to training foreign troops, elite troops, or getting some late game upgrades. For the third and final cultural aspect, Africans lack heavily in late game eco. They do not have mills and plantations, and for food they must either rely on livestock or f from lots. Lots can only take one villager at a time and they're not very fast. For the coin alternative, they must build quarries and train rocks, which then act like normal mines. So their late game eco is very micro heavy and not very effective in general. Moving into a similar but more advanced culture, the Balkans are also a civilization that suffers from late game eco unless you are Greece. Kind of ironic, but moving on to the abilities, Balkan civs also do not have mills or plantation, except for Greece which has all plantations. What they have instead are crops that first need to grow in order to be gathered, then replenished when depleted for food. Coins are little easier, which is gathered from beehives as it is an infinite source but only one villager can gather from it, having to build many individual ones as a result. On top of these crop additions, the market has been changed where the gather rates of hunts have been repro um, re replaced with gather rates for crops. The market also now works with levels. Once techs are researched, they are automatically replaced with the next upgrade, but must be leveled up first. However, the level up does give quite a nice amount of XP for the rather cheap cost. So what are the hunt upgrades you may ask? Do not worry, they are still here but at this unique Balkan building, the Hunting Lodge, which replaces the livestock pen and upgrades both hunts and livestock and can also fatten livestock. Balkans also cannot age up from the town centre, but have big buttons in all uh, other buildings except for houses and churches as well. And the big buttons essentially provide an agent bonus that is uh, respective to their own building. Balkans also have a special expert called a cartographer, which is weaker than normal explorers, but doubles the treasure yield. So if you pick up a 50 wood treasure, it will come out as 100 wood, but it's quite weak against treasure guardians to make up for the balance. Finally, moving into the biggest added culture, the Latin Americans are quite unique as well. Their unique age up system has different costs for each option. However, the more you pay, the better the deal as you get better bonuses and aging up is done faster. As you can see here, the times go from 120 seconds with 600 food to 1000 food with 30 seconds. Fortunately, Latin American civs do not struggle in eco like some other cultures previously mentioned as they do have mills and plantations as well as arsenals. So overall, they have a decent eco and military. Despite lacking a safe house, Latin Americans do have town halls, which instead of spies, can train colonels. Colonels uh, trained can then be assigned back to the town hall to trickle XP. Colonels have their own abilities, which will be explained later on. But going past all the features that were just mentioned, the post office is probably the primary Latin American future. It is slightly similar to the consulate as you get to choose a foreign ally, but it does not operate with export, rather 400 coin. Once the ally is selected, an immigrant colony will arrive that turns into a town center of the chosen colony. From this building, improvements and units can be obtained using shipments. These foreign allies are really great as it can cover the weaknesses of Latin American cities as they do not have access to factories, capitals or even the safe house. 
So they do not have access to powerful resource trickles, nor do they have access to blockades and spies. However, these can be obtained from foreign immigrants as follows. Japan with the ability using four shipments to get spies. So the large civilization variety covered and also the new cultures mentioned, we can now jump into the second reason as to why was liberty is such a great adventure. Uh, a whole new world to explore, as they say, on the maps page. On top of adding so many civilization, was the liberty also has a bunch of new maps. As you can see, this is only a part of the list of maps that have been added to the game. And some of these maps are quite interesting as they have special abilities. So one of the biggest changes to the game is the addition of a new religion mechanic. Every civilization can now pick either no religion or one of two options which is accurate to the country's historical beliefs. Such as Malta here that can either pick Catholic or Orthodox. As you can see here, the church has been reworked and now operates only for religion and its text has been moved over to the capital and the market. Mercantilism over here and the other church upgrades over here at the capital. But as you might notice, the capital is now available at H2 and only costs 250 wood. Its normal upgrades are still available at the later ages like normal, so no need to worry about the late game. But going back to religion, uh, once any religious choice is picked, so uh, this does take a minute, so let's uh, do the speed sheet really quick. So once the religion is uh, researched, just like right-clicking a mine, you can now assign villages to a church. And now once they're assigned the church, you can finally start gathering faith. Of course, this is uh, get, being gathered at a much faster rate than normal. But then, using faith, you can now research things within the church. So, all civs share this eco-boost tech here at the top with the export icon, but every religion has unique improvements, so you have to explore and find what religion is best for you and the civilization you're playing. Another major gameplay feature entails the spy rework. This changes the spies in the original game quite significantly. So they cannot be trained from the church anymore, but do have their own special building called the safe house. Right over here looks as a keyhole with an eye under it. Pretty cheap building at 100 in wood and 50 coin. So all civilizations except for the Latin Americans have access to this building to train spies for 250 coin and 3 population. So the safe house also offers a bunch of improvements for the spy units themselves. And the spy tech at age 5 from the capital has also been moved into the safe house. Now moving on to the spies themselves, they have 5 abilities overall. Entering stealth and being able to attack while in stealth. They also have an H3 upgrade for 400 gold that allows the attack to be ranged and the stealth is still uh, kept. 2. Selecting an enemy unit and being able to see the line of sight with the informer's ability. 3. Planting mines. At a small cost, up to 15 mines can be planted at anyone on the map as deadly traps. 4. Spies can now detect and disarm mines in a selected area where the ability is cast. 5. Sabotage, my personal favorite. A deadly ability that does the same job as a petard, but the spy remains unscathed after the explosion. Every spy has a unique cooldown on the sabotage ability and can keep casting it as long as it is off cooldown. Right, so talking of the kernel abilities, there's three to talk about. First of all, Plaga, when cast, deals insane damage in an area. Uh, second ability is a time slow area ability. So once this is cast, all units within that zone are slowed down heavily. As you can see, even cavalry go down under one speed. A third and final ability, as uh, special to the colonels, is to cast Incendio. This sets everything on fire. The fire deals significant amount of damage and will destroy all buildings and kill units within its range. To sum everything up, Wars of Liberty is a huge mod which essentially is a game on its own. Hopefully as a result of this video I have gained your interest to at least give it a try. I also hope that this video was helpful in getting a general but better understanding towards the mod without having to dive face first into the unknown considering the so many changes and additions.
But as this is meant to be a short and general introductory video, I will be ending it here, leaving the exploration of the individual civilizations to you, the player.